just feel, I just want you to feel it so you know. Just kidding. <laughs> yes, it kind of got me. I was like, oh. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's Canine Educator. Thank you for joining me here today. We are going to do a brand new series which I'm very excited about. It's something you guys ask all the time. We're going to do an introduction on the remote collar or better known as the e-collar. Very excited to start this series with you guys. Today we're in Kansas City working with young Silver, she's a young Kenna Corso who's never been to introduced to the e-collar yet before. So today we're gonna to start the series and walk you through the entire process on how to introduce the remote collar properly. So we have some really cool advancements, not only for us as humans, but for dogs as well. And so the accomplishments that we can achieve with the remote collar are far past anything we've ever done in the dog training environment. And in my opinion, it's one of the better tools that we've ever used on dogs. Of course, you can use them wrong, but you could also use them right. And that's what we're doing here today. So silver is on a level three or four, and I would suggest for you guys to start off on a very low level, below a 10. All dogs have different sensitivity levels, different working levels, depending on the breed, depending on the temperament. And so I typically start off universally around a five. The stimulation from the remote collar will ultimately mean I want something from her. Oh, you want to sit, you say? Oh, you want to down? Sure. Oh, you want to place? And so what this does is it allows you to open up so many new doors with your dog wirelessly. So you have more communication off leash. Obviously, it's way safer to be able to recall your dog by touching them from a remote versus praying and hoping that they come back as the uh, fast truck's coming fast or they're about to get into a dog fight. So the remote collar is beautiful. But the most important thing with the e-collar is introduction. So I'm gonna to continue to work silver by tapping the remote every time I say heel or I turn and when I ask her to sit so she can start associating the stimulation with my voice. What is that? Is that like a vibration? It's a stim, so it, good question. So what it is, I'll show you after like what it feels like, but what it is is it's a low level stimulation. So it's the, vi like if I did the vibrate, that would be more corrective than the stim. Like the cell phone vibrate uh -huh. is less than this vibrate and that would like freak her out. All right, so all I'm doing is I'm just walking around and every time I ask Silver to do something, I'm tapping the e-collar to associate that sensation with my commands, heel, tap, good. So in conjunction at the same time, heel, tap, good. Same thing, silver sit, tap, good girl. Heel, tap, good. Heel, tap, good. Silver sit, good girl. Here's a good girl. Silver down, good girl, good. So you can use food. You can use whatever other collar you use um, with this, an association, prong collar, flat collar, martingale, whatever you want to use. So all I'm doing is I'm just tapping the remote and telling her to do something at the same time. One thing I should mention is the e-collar or the remote collar is used to reinforce behaviors, not teach behaviors. So one thing you really don't want to do is try to teach a dog with the e-collar because then things get really confusing. It's much like trying to learn how to drive a car from somebody who speaks a different language that you don't speak. But if you speak that language, you're gonna be way more successful learning how to operate that vehicle. So typically there's two different functionalities that we're gonna be using with the e-collar on most professional e-collars. On this collar, the mini educator, it has a continuous and a momentary. So a nick and a continuous command or function. So the top one is gonna be the nick. So you would use that when you ask the dog to silver, sit, tap. You just need it once just to get the dog's attention. The continuous function is something that you would use for maybe a down. So you're gonna hold the button until the dog complies and goes into the behavior you desire, and then you release your finger and it shuts off. So it's a bit of escape training as well. The dog does the behavior, you release, it's escaping the pressure. Silver, down, release. Good girl, just like that. So those are the two main functions that we're gonna be using on the e-collar for the majority of this entire process. So like I said before, there's two main functions we're gonna be using when doing remote collar training. 
There's a momentary and a continuous on most professional remote collars. So the momentary, or the nick, is basically just one little nick. So if you tap it, it just goes once to the dog. So I use that function simply when I say heel, sit, break, stay, whatever. It's just a one-time use really quick. Even if you hold it down, it still doesn't matter. The bottom button usually is a continuous function, which is exactly how it sounds. So you're gonna hold the button down continually until the dog does the behavior that you desire them to do. And so it's called escape training in some cases. So I'm gonna show you how to apply the nick and the continuous both in some very basic obedience that Silver already knows. So all we're gonna do right here is we're gonna ask her to place with the continuing function with the e-collar. We tried it before, she felt the pressure, she downed, she was a little unsure of what I wanted her to do. So now I'm just gonna guide her with the leash and show her exactly what I want a little, clear, a little clearer. So we're placed. Yes, good place. Good girl. Stay. So Silver knows all these things. She knows place. She knows sit. She knows stay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm reinforcing the behaviors with the e-collar remotely. So when I come way over here, I can still reach out and touch her and tell her to stay. Good stay, Silver. Good stay. So I'm using the e-collar to touch her from that distance. And the beautiful thing is, is that's all it does, is it just taps her on her neck and lets her know that I can touch her from there. A lot of people presume that just because the dog does it, you don't have to tap this, and that's because people think that this is a correction. This is not a correction for the dog at all, it's an association. So it's much like if somebody was standing this way and you wanted to get their attention and you tap them and they turn and they do what you want, it shuts off. So that's exactly what I'm doing here, is I'm just using the e-collar on the heel and the sit and maybe even the down and I even do it when I say break because I want her to know that the sensation is coming from me. Heel. So one thing I like to do for those of you at home, heel, good, heel, is every time I tap the remote I'm going to raise my hand. Good, heel, good, heel, good, silver sit, sit, good girl, down, good. Okay, break. Good girl. Good. Place. Go continuous. Good. Sit. Good. Down. Good. Stay. So that's something that we call a combo. So once you start using this, you're doing it over and over again to basically annoy the dog. But more importantly, realistically, to associate the sensation of the e-collar with the command. Just like if I'm standing next to her and she feels sit, she looks up and she sits and she gets rewarded. She's gonna start associating that little stimulation with my commands and that I want her to do something. So now I'm gonna show you how to simply apply the continuous function with the place command. Silver, place. Yes, release, sit. Yes, release, stay, nick. I walk away. Good. Stay. So again, I can tap the nick and reinforce the stay from this distance very simply. Good stay, and I tap. Good stay, and I tap. So it allows me to reach out and touch her from here. So, when I, so now when I ask her to sit, I can use the continuous. Silver, sit, good, and I release. Right when her butt hits the ground, you release. So for you guys at home, why would you do remote collar? Why would you do e-collar? As I discussed before, it allows you to really expand your control with your dog responsibly. So with Silver, she gets really overstimulated when people come to the door. So by having the ability to reinforce your place command from a distance is gonna be super helpful for the owners when people come over unexpected. You say, Silver, go to your place. You use this, she stays, etc. So it's a really good enforcer for any type of new behavior. Just feel, I just want you to feel it so you know. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, she kind of got me over like, <laughs> That's it. Okay. Can't feel it. No. Right? No. So like, it's like weird. good stay. And if you do feel it, it's just like just a little oh, sensation. Cool. I'm trying to think of like what that feeling is. Here, put it up here. Okay, go again. <laughs> no, normally people don't feel <laughs> yeah. it. I can feel it a little bit. Do, can you? But I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel it. I'm not saying I don't feel it. So like, <gasps> usually like I put it to my face and you can see like, it, it's a sensation. So they do it in a chiropractic therapy a lot. Mm -hmm. 
Like those little things they put on yeah, you? Yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's like stim. It's a, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's literal, it's literal stim. The sensation that you're using amplifies, just like parenting. Mm -hmm. Like if we're having a conversation, hey, Timmy, um, come here. And then Timmy runs out into the street, you're going to amplify. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same exact thing, wireless. Ew. Good. Good and you just tell her to down? Down. Oh my bad, I took a plate. Yep. Good. Down. Good. And then just do a, just do a stay. Oh, stay. Good. Got it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool. Cool, I'll take it. Do it. It's cool that like it like, barely even like touches them and they still yeah. understand, yeah. Yeah. So I guess I should show you how to put this thing on. Put it right over. Put it right on her, nice and tight. So you want to make sure that these little prongs are sticking against the skin. Nice and tight against the skin, just like that. Then you tuck it away. I like to put it on the side versus here and here. This is the throat and this is the the spine here. So I like to put it right on the side where all the muscles are. So I just leave it right there and make sure it's tight. If it's not tight, you're not going to get connections, which means you're wasting your time. The next question that usually pops into dog owner's mind is like, when do you use it as a correction or whatever? When do you use it as an aversive? So like there, she hardly feels it. Like she just, she's like, what the hell is that? I don't know what that is. Yeah. So basically what it is, is I say place, it turns on, she goes to place, poof, it disappears. So through compliance, the stimulation goes away. I'm not using it as a punishment at all right now. I'm not using it as a correction at all. I'm just teaching her that this is me. So when I do use it as a punishment, like if I do the vibrate, cause she jumped on somebody that's across the yard, she's gonna know that that's, ah, sit. Good. She's gonna know that that's you. But right now it is confusing because the majority of people who get this just think it's like, just that correction tool. You know what I mean? It's just not, it's just, it's literally the best thing since sliced bread. It's literally like the invention of the iPhone for dogs. You just gotta know how to use it. Yeah. So this is gonna be like the, the blend into the second session is to do the basic stuff with the e-collar, with distraction. Um, so she starts getting used to and influenced um, with the e-collar, with reality distraction like her brother. So that's what we're doing right now is um, not going too crazy and getting them too close and I'm not going too far away. We're just starting to blend the obedience together and, and this is kind of the start of the second session and the end of the first session. Here's my girl. Oh, B-rubs. Always got a break for B-rubs. Always got a break for B-rubs. Right, sweet silver? So thank you guys so very much for watching the first episode on how to introduce the remote collar properly. A couple things I'm gonna give you guys to go home with with homework is, I get this question a lot, is how much do you do it throughout the day? This is very mentally exhausting for the dog. Uh, if you do it more than 15 to 20 minutes, they completely check out way faster than any other training that I've seen. So what you wanna do is do this maybe 10 minute sessions multiple times a day to not overdo it with the dog. Quality over quantity. The other thing I would suggest is putting the collar on break, throughout the day to make sure that the dog doesn't associate just the e-collar with just this type of training, meaning I have to listen off leash too. So you wanna put the collar on and associate it throughout the dog's life. What I do is in the morning, I pop my e-collars on my dogs, that way throughout the whole day, I have total control over them all the time. Another great exercise you can do to help introduce the remote collar is the send away to the place with only remote collar pressure. Never go to your place. Go to your place. Pressure's on, pressure's on, pressure's on.